Hello to all listeners, says Yaroslav from Rabka Zadroy. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, I have been studying and analyzing the Bible for over 50 years. The current series of lectures is devoted to the times of the end, the end of the world, and we will especially discuss the activity of Elijah the prophet during this time, which is foretold in the last three verses of the book of Malachi. Now listen to the seventh episode entitled, Elijah, the Ravens, and the Kareth Creek. Leave this place and go east and hide near Kareth Ravine east of the Jordan River. You may drink from the stream, and I have commanded ravens to bring you food there. So Elijah did what the Lord said. He went to Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan, and lived there. The birds brought Elijah bread and meat every morning and evening, and he drank water from the stream. The first book of the Kings, chapter 17, verses 3 to 6, Elijah receives an order from God. Leave here, go east and hide by the stream Kareth. Elijah obeys God's command. Elijah is not a one order prophet like Jonah, who had a message for Nineveh. God had other tasks for him, for which he had to wait secretly for three and a half years. The Lord God does not expose Elijah to death at the hand of King Ahab but tells him to go away and hide. No man can accomplish this miraculous feeding by Elijah's ravens. This can only be done by the Creator, God, whose service animals are and perform his will. Animals perform many useful functions in the scriptures, and not only those in the plan of salvation. Just as a reminder, I list various animals that had a significant impact on biblical history and the plan of salvation. 1. Lambs, goats, oxen, and doves as sacrifices on the altar in the temple. 2. The raven and the dove in Noah's Ark, a harbingers of the end of the flood and the exit from the ark. 3. Balaam's talking donkey. 4. Daniel in the lion's den. 5. Jonah and the big fish in which he was three days and three nights. 6. God took care of the Israelites' cattle in the fourth commandment of the Decalogue, so that they too would rest on the Sabbath. Cattle were not allowed to do any work on the Sabbath. Many times the land was visited by famine, and the famine in the time of Elijah the prophet was caused by Israel's apostasy from the Lord God. Not only was this famine afflicted Israel, But also Sidom, where Elijah went after the stream of Kareth had dried up. When the Israelites left Egypt and went into the desert, where there was no water or food, God miraculously fed and watered them in the desert for forty years. Remember how the Lord your God has led you in the desert for these forty years, taking away your pride and testing you, because He wanted to know what was in your heart. He wanted to know if you would obey His commands. He took away your pride when he let you get hungry, and then he fed you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had ever seen. This was to teach you that a person does not live by eating only bread, but by everything the Lord says. The fifth book of Moses called Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 2 and 3. The experience with manna is not only about feeding people with the manna, but also about educating the Israelites to live according to the words coming from the mouth of the Lord God. This is the story of the beginning of the manna. When the Israelites saw it, they asked each other, What is it? Because they did not know what it was. So Moses told them, This is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. The Lord has commanded, Each one of you must gather what he needs, about two quarts for every person in your family. So the people of Israel did this. Some people gathered much, and some gathered little. Then they measured it. The person who gathered more did not have too much, nor did the person who gathered less have too little. Each person gathered just as much as he needed. Moses said to them, Don't keep any of it to eat the next day. But some of the people did not listen to Moses and kept part of it to eat the next morning. It became full of worms and began to stink, so Moses was angry with those people. Every morning each person gathered as much food as he needed. But when the sun became hot, it melted away. On the sixth day, the people gathered twice as much food four quarts for every person. When all the leaders of the community came and told this to Moses, he said to them, This is what the Lord commanded, because tomorrow is the Sabbath, the Lord's holy day of rest. Bake what you want to bake, and boil what you want to boil today. Save the rest of the food until tomorrow morning.
So the people saved it until the next morning, as Moses had commanded, and none of it began to stink or have worms in it. Moses told the people, Eat the food you gathered yesterday. Today is a Sabbath, the Lord's day of rest. You will not find any out in the field today. You should gather the food for six days, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day. On that day, there will not be any food on the ground. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather food, but they couldn't find any. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will you people refuse to obey my commands and teachings? Look, the Lord has made the Sabbath a day of rest for you. So on the sixth day, he will give you enough food for two days, but on the seventh day, each of you must stay where you are. Do not go anywhere. So the people rested on the seventh day. The people of Israel called the food manna. It was like small white seeds and tasted like wafers made with honey. The second book of Moses called Exodus chapter 16 verses 15 to 31. During the fall of the mama, three miracles happened. 1. For the first five days of the week, the manna left on the second day was full of worms and stank. 2. On the sixth day, they gathered the manna twice, and the manna left on the second day did not spoil. 3. On the seventh day, there was no manna. What the Israelites learned 1. They had to collect portions on an ongoing basis every day. Work six days. 2. On Friday, the day of preparation for the Sabbath, they collected double. 3. On the Sabbath, Saturday, all the people rested. 4. The disobedience of Israelites, they collected too much in a week. 5. The disobedient Israelites went out to gather manna on the Sabbath. Jesus spoke about ravens in his teaching. Jesus said to his followers, So I tell you, don't worry about the food you need to live, or about the clothes you need for your body. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothes. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest, and they don't have storerooms or barns, but God feeds them. And you are worth much more than birds. But seek God's kingdom, and all the other things you need will be given to you. Don't fear, little flock, because your Father wants to give you the kingdom. The Gospel according to Luke chapter 12 verses 22 to 24 and 31 to 32. The most important thing is to care for eternal life, for the kingdom of heaven, more than earthly care. We cannot put the Lord God the Father lower than material values and care for our bodies, neglecting to seek the kingdom of heaven. The Lord God not only cares about our earthly life but also eternal life, as evidenced by Elijah and Israel in the desert. Notes on life according to the prophet Isaiah. Look, The Lord's day of judging is coming a terrible day, a day of God's anger. He will destroy the land and the sinners who live in it. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 9. Babylon has fallen. It has fallen. All the statues of her gods lie broken on the ground. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 21, verse 9. The people of the earth have ruined it because they do not follow God's teachings or obey God's laws or keep their agreement with God that was to last forever. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 24, verse 5. But he was wounded for the wrong we did. He was crushed for the evil we did. The punishment, which made us well, was given to him, and we are healed because of his wounds. We all have wandered away like sheep. Each of us has gone his own way. For all the evil we have done. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53.5.6. This is what the Lord says Give justice to all people, and do what is right because my salvation will come to you soon. Soon everyone will know that I do what is right. The person who obeys the law about the Sabbath will be blessed, and the person who does no evil will be blessed. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 56, verses 1 and 2. But sinners and those who turn against him will be destroyed. Those who have left the Lord will die. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 28. These people are like children who lie and refuse to obey. They refuse to listen to the Lord's teachings. They tell the seers, don't see any more visions. They say to the prophets, don't tell us the truth. Say things that will make us feel good. See only good things for us. Stop blocking our path. Get out of our way. Stop telling us about God, the Holy One of Israel. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 30, verses 9 to 11. 
Teachings from Isaiah's Prophecy 1. God will exterminate sinners upon his return on the Lord's Day. 2. Modern idolatrous Babylon has fallen and her idols, the works of man's hands, will be destroyed. The transgression of the law, the breaking of the commandments, and the breaking of the covenant with the Lord God caused the earth to be polluted. Defilement is profanation. Profanation is a concept referring to the violation of the sphere of the sacred, resulting in the deprivation of sacred items or consecrated places of their cult value, and in the treatment of things, commonly revered values, without due respect. 1. Keep the law as the prophet Elijah recommends as one of the conditions of salvation. 2. Those who break the Decalogue, i.e. sinners, will be destroyed. 3. Perverse people do not want to hear God's law but want to hear pleasant words. 4. The idols of idolaters will be destroyed and those who worship them will not inherit the holy mountain of Horeb. 5. It is evil in God's eyes to have no law. 6. Helpful notes for studying the scriptures. Because these lectures are for the advanced, I do not explain or interpret many issues. I understand that the listeners understand my lecture which in many places is given symbolically. I'm just talking like scripture and symbols. I will explain some things in more detail. Each listener should individually search the books and ask the Holy Spirit for understanding. Progress in faith and perfection are the most important. Type. A term in Christian theology and biblical exegesis concerning various issues, events, people, or objects from the Old Testament which are treated as a foreshadowing of what was to happen in the New Testament. Antitype. A term in Christian theology and biblical exegesis regarding various issues, events, people, or objects from the New Testament, which are treated as the fulfillment of what was announced in various issues, events, people, or objects in the Old Testament, i.e. an equivalent realizing the biblical type. Examples of the type and the antitype, which is the fulfillment of the biblical type, 1. Type equals Abraham's sacrifice of his son, the antitype of Christ's death. 2. Type equals copper serpent, antitype Christ's death. 3. Type equals Jonah inside the fish three days and three nights, antitype Christ's death and stay in the tomb three days and three nights. Thank you so much brother for such a wonderful and meaningful song of salvation. I was a, lost, demon-possessed, violent, drug user, dealer, pusher, deep in the occult and magic, full contact martial arts instructor, thief, liar, womanizer, and oh yeah, a former rock and roll lead guitarist and singer who on August 18, 1978, I was going to commit suicide. I met a wonderful woman, Denise, a few days before who I was very uncomfortable around but she had so much love and peace in her that drove me crazy. Her Christian girlfriend Sharon, had a dream about me and said, Joe has to get, saved, tomorrow. They took me to a Christian concert. Brother Barry Maguire was singing and sharing his testimony. Long story short, he said, you can leave here the same way you came in or become a, new, person in Jesus. I tried the old, suicide was beckoning me but, I cried out to Christ to, save, me. I heard and saw two large demons come out of my body when I asked Jesus to come into my heart and save me. I had a powerful encounter with the true and living God. I felt the power of God's power filling me from head to toe. I have been saved now for 42 years. I married that wonderful woman who demonstrated to me what a real Christian is by her love and devotion to our loving Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. I was called later to play and sing and preach in churches, homes, and on the streets. My wife and I share Christ with anybody and everywhere we go. Jesus Christ is returning soon. Praise God. Are you ready? For further study, use your notebook often to write down your thoughts, comments, misunderstandings, tasks, and goals. Be sure to read the fifth book of Moses called Deuteronomy chapters 1-11. A blessing from Almighty God to those who live in fellowship with Him and are perfect. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I invite you to the next topics that I will discuss in the spirit and power of Elijah in the next lectures. Another seventh episode of the book of Malachi under the title, Elijah the Prophet and the Day of the Lord.